Hey everyone, it's Kate. And today I'm interviewing Kelly Ward, the owner of True Bias Patterns. We're filming on both Facebook Live and YouTube Live. And if you're watching on YouTube and you wanna learn more about sewing and quilting, you should subscri subscribe to our channel. Uh, February is Independent by Design Month at the Confidence Stitch. And the giveaway for this month is two independent patterns of your choice. Uh, the question of the month is, what are your favorite independent pattern companies and which ones do you wish we carried? All you need to do is answer that question in the comments and we'll enter you to win two patterns of your choice. Today's confident shout out goes to Elaine Wolf, who made a pair of True Bias Lander pants out of fabric from another company, but we forgive her. Um, and they're so cute. Like all of the True Bias patterns, they fit great and they look great. So great job, Elaine. So welcome, Kelly. Thank you. I'm glad to have you today. Um, I know that you moved from New York City to Denver in the last few years. In fact, we had coffee together a few years ago, which was really fun. And so I'm wondering how where you live influences the patterns that you design. Yeah, sure. That's a great question. Yeah, my um, my husband and my kids and I, we moved to Denver from New York City. Gosh, I think, I mean, it's been about five years now. Um, it was a very hard transition. I'll just say that first of all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I was worried about that because Denver has a very chill vibe. Um, most of the time, people are just wearing workout leggings and sweatshirts. Um, right. In fact, you'll I'll like, I get angry sometimes because I'll go to restaurants and people will be in essentially like workout cash. And I'm like, you have a chance to like dress up. Um, but it still influences me for sure. I have noticed, I was thinking back about the last few patterns that I've released since living here. And I do love like a little bit of a Western vibe sometimes. Like I think about the Salida skirt that has kind of like a V in the front. Um, right. I don't know if you have that one there. I'm actually wearing I, it right now. <laughs> oh, I do. I know I have it here. Oh, here it is. Yeah. So there's definitely like a little Western thing there for sure. Um, yeah. I never was designing like super fancy party dresses, um, right. but I do love that a little bit boho, a little bit 70s vibe. Uh, the Lander Pant is another one. It's one of the first ones that I released when I moved here. And that definitely... Um, has kind of that Western, a little bit of a Western vibe to it, I would say. Right. Um, so yeah, I think it influences. I will say though, I'm usually the most dressed up person at everything I go to here. Like I'm not yeah. giving up that. I love to dress up, so. Uh, I know, when when we had coffee, you had really fancy boots on and and you had you had your Emerson pants. I think that was right before you released this pattern oh, probably. and you were wearing these and they were, they looked, they really look quite fancy, especially for Denver. I love that you remember that because that was a couple of years ago. <laughs> I'm a nerd. <clears throat> I'm a, I'm an independent pattern nerd. Yeah. Or maybe I just stood out so much because everybody else was in casual. You're like, what is she doing? <laughs> you look so good. Yeah. No, it's Thanks. great. Um, so how long have you been sewing? So I've been sewing most of my life. Uh, my I come from a family, there's eight kids in my family actually. So very like wow. resourceful, <laughs> that kind of, you know, we, my mother sewed our Halloween costumes and a lot of our clothes. So we, I had access to her sewing machine since I was young. And it was kind of expected that we all at least learn how to sew. I started taking sewing lessons when I was about eight uh, from our neighbor next door. And then mm. after that, mostly self-taught, I took some classes in college and then, you know, later went on to do pattern making, uh, work at school. But, um, yeah, I've always kind of dabbled, I would say in sewing before it right. became my profession. Yeah. So when did you start to bias patterns and what was missing in the garment pattern world that you wanted to, what hole did you want to fill? 
So True Bias has almost been around for almost eight years. Um, so a long time. Um, I started it, we, my family had actually, we were living in Chicago and we moved to New York City and I had my second child and I kind of went through a little bit of a, I don't know, I was struggling, let's just say identity crisis. Mm, um, yeah, yeah. Not because you weren't working and you had yeah. two kids. And exactly. And my former career had been photography and getting back in after we moved and starting over just felt overwhelming. And the fact of being away from my kids for photo shoots just didn't seem very practical. And I wanted a shift. I had started True Bias as a blog because blogging mm -hmm. was really big about eight years ago. It was like the heyday of that. Um, and it was then that I was like, I want to turn this into a career. There weren't a lot of companies around then. I, I could think of like Colette was around. I would say By Hand London was probably brand new. Megan Nielsen and then right. Grain Line. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. So there's just a few. So there was still a lot of room for fashion forward patterns. Uh, I would say Grain Line was a huge influence on me because her stuff, I remember making the Scout tee and it mm -hmm. wasn't retro. A lot of the sewing patterns before that were you know, party dresses are super like 1950s inspired, but hers were very ready to wear, um, right. boxy, liked. And so I definitely feel like there was room in the market for it then. And I was, yeah, I went for it. <laughs> yeah, you sure did. Um, so do you have a target audience? Yeah, I was thinking about that. That's an interesting question because I do think in some ways I do, um, but in some ways I do think pattern designers now, unlike maybe when I started, are expected to really um, be able to attract a very wide range of people. Um, and you definitely want that. You want to be able to um, attract a lot of different people to your, to your designs or to your pattern. But I would say if I had to like say who my target audience is, it's me kind of like it's people who are creative want that creative outlet they're um they're willing to pay a little bit more money for <clears throat> a little bit more uh fashion forward a little bit more um better instructions than you might get in something that you might find at a big box store um also people who care about the fashion industry and where it's going and want a little bit more control over their choices to mm -hmm. um, ethical reasons, whether it be for the earth or for, um, you know, the workers who are making a lot of our fast fashion clothes. So, you know, I mean, I think there is like a wide range in there a little bit, but people who want to push it a little bit uh, with taking a few risks, but also everyday clothes that you can wear every day. So creative woman mostly yeah <laughs> well that's great because um peggy mead had the same answer she oh, said really? that yeah that she is basically her target audience and i am definitely my target audience at the confident mm -hmm. stitch i'm creating something that i would like so um that's really interesting and um I'm you. I I've created the confident stitch for the same reasons that you created true bias. So that's really great. I like that. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense to use yourself a little bit because you can pick your own brain, right? And <laughs> with something as personal as clothing, when you're making clothing, you want to be able to wear it. So it makes sense to create it for someone like yourself who wants to wear those exact things, right? Right. So what expertise did you bring to the table when you started your pattern company? Yeah, so I do have, um, I went back to school once I was in New York City. I got a certificate in pattern making from FIT. Um, so as far as like technical expertise, if that's what you're asking, um, I do think some of the other things that I think help my company is I do have a photography background. That was actually right. what I went to school for before my undergrad. That's really helped me a lot. I do all my own photo shoots uh, still. Right. Um, and then I think the blogging background really helped too. I started off as a blogger before I transitioned into pattern making, which I do think, I don't know. Yeah. Has helped me kind of, I was the, I was the customer before I was 
the <laughs> the creator. Um, right. And you knew what you wanted. Yeah. 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 I think it's interesting that a lot of um, people like people who started um, little pattern companies or anything, anyone in our biz, a lot of times they bring a sort of expertise from their past life that really helps them in their new current life. And I think that's really important. I think your photography, I'm sure has helped you a lot. Yeah, it's great. I mean, we when you own your own business, especially a creative business, I just think you have to become a little bit of a jack of all trades. There's some stuff yeah. I'm much stronger at than others, but the right. more you can like jump in and do yourself, the better, especially in the yeah. beginning. Yeah, yeah, everything yourself in the beginning, for sure. So what do you like most about running an independent pattern company? Um, I really like my job. I like that I get to be creative every day um, in one way or the other. I'm definitely not sewing every day. I wish I was sewing right. every day, but that's by far not the thing I do the most. I know. Uh, most, yeah, most of it is drafting and technical work or photo shoots or writing blog posts or doing taxes, <laughs> that kind yeah. of stuff. Um, right. But I always make sure I have a bit of creativity in all my days. So I do often save myself like a half an hour at the end of my work day to, you know, I'll have an ongoing project that I'm working on that's just personal and not something that's for a new pattern. Um, and it, for me, it fills me up. I oh. think it's really, really important to have something creative every day. So yeah, I love it. I might. I love. I might um, implement that idea myself. <gasps> I think it's good. You know, when I had just had, I guess before I started this business, um, I had a therapist tell me that for like moms, especially, but anybody who's like taking care of a lot of things, most of the things you do in a day get destroyed. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, right. you finish over and over and over again. And she just said how therapeutic it is for people to have something in their life that they do and it doesn't get undone. Um, and it gives you like some forward momentum or some goal seeking. And I that's how I look at sewing a little bit. It's kind of, there's benchmarks there. You're working towards an end goal of wearing something. And I do think there's something about that that's very good for like someone's soul. Yeah, that, that's great. I think you're absolutely right. So what do you like least about running an independent pattern company? Um, the like accounting taxes <laughs> business side of things. Right. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, we're right in the middle of tax season. So that's probably why this is coming up so much. I was on emails and calls with my accountant this morning. Um, but it is hard to balance. I mean, I still do most, you know, I do have like, you know, freelancers, like an accountant and stuff like that, that help me with things. But I do the majority of things myself and I've had to learn a lot of things. And my strengths are more in the creative aspect of things and less in the technical side of things um, as far as like numbers go. <laughs> so yeah, I don't like that. I'll just admit it. It's not fun. Yeah, that's fine. It's stressful. So what is, yeah. What has been the biggest challenge you faced? Um, I think growing has been a challenge. Um, it's also an exciting challenge, I will say. So it's challenging, but, you know, I mean, kind of with that same thing, you know, I, so it's just me here. I, I still pack my own orders and stuff like that. I do, like I said, I do have freelancers who help me. Anything that I can send off to someone via email, I do get help with my emails and grading and stuff like that. But uh, yeah. as I've grown, there is just a lot of things and trying to balance it, it's hard. It's like, right. yeah, I've had to learn a lot about not only, yeah, managing myself, managing my time, prioritizing certain things, learning how to calendar things out. Um, sewing generally is not something we look at that way. We look at it as kind of a way to escape, I think. But when it's your job, it's it has to be a much more regimented thing. Like I can't always just sew the new pattern that I get distracted by. Um, I have to stick to what makes the most sense for my business. And that's sometimes not fun. Right, right. 
Um, and it, it sounds like you might be kind of on the cusp of needing to hire someone. Yeah. I mean, it's something we talk about a lot. So like right before COVID hit, that was a big thing. I was like looking to hire and then COVID hit and I was like, I can't, I can't have somebody in my space right. packing orders. Um, but yeah, there are definitely conversations going in the background where I'm trying to decide what the next right step is. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> always a challenge to know if, if can I or the few people who work here handle the work or are we ready to hire a new person? Yep. Cause that's always a bit of a faith jump, right? It's like, you almost have to like make that decision before you're quite there. I don't know. So you have that ability to the trajectory to, to grow there. and mm -hmm. right. So yeah, it's definitely something that we're talking a lot about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good. Um, so what trends do you see in the garment making world? Um, yeah, I'm excited about this. I feel like, I mean, there's obviously like fashion trends, but then there's just the trends of the industry, which I feel like sewing is one of those things that there hasn't been a lot of change in until like the last five to 10 years when PDF patterns came in. I mean, essentially we're right. all using kind of the same sewing machines. There hasn't been a lot of like innovation and invention. So I just feel like we're on the cusp of that. Like as a community, we've grown enough that I think people are gonna start looking at us more. There's gonna be more tools that come out. I mean, we see how there's the projectors that are coming out. Um, right. I'm excited to see where that kind of goes. Obviously patterns are a big thing. I think video, is getting really big. I mean, just the fact that we're doing this interview, more and more people are watching videos to learn how to sew. Right. Right. So yeah, there's some real trends I think happening towards like technology and innovation that are super exciting. Yeah, it's it's exciting to see. And it's also exciting to see the, the garment world expanding. There, mm -hmm. There's so many things for quilters and ah, we love quilting here, but it's nice to see the the garment industry, garment making industry take off as well. Yeah, kind of hold its own yeah. a little bit. Yeah, I agree. I feel like it, like garment, even below, like knitting has also been the other one, right? That has just mm -hmm. has a lot more following, but we're catching up. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so what is your favorite true bias pattern? Oh yeah, you're making me pick a child here. I know. <laughs> I that. Um, I mean, right now, and I think this tends to change over time. There, I love different ones for different reasons. Like the Ogden Cami to me is like, it is like the gift that keeps on right. giving. Like I love the Ogden Cami because it is a basic that you know anybody can kind of tackle. It's a lot of people's first entry point into garment sewing, so I love it for that reason. It's right. um, yeah, so that is like a fan favorite. It's the one I've sold the most of by far, you know, wow. across the board. So yeah, it is like the true bias pattern. But the one that I probably wear the most right now is the Marlo, which is my newest pattern, which I know is not quite in print yet, but it's coming, oh. I promise. And what is um, that? It's this one. It's the oversized sweater. It's kind of like cropped. Oh, right, right. I mm -hmm. have it, seen that. Yeah. It just came out um, like a month ago. So we've been a little back on our uh, printing, as I'm sure you know, that like there's been, you know, the tissue printers were down for a while. So we are just catching up right, with some of our patterns, like the Nova jumpsuit and this one that didn't get to go to print before. Mm. Yeah. 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 That was intense. That there's it was. only one, there's only one tissue printer in the whole country and it was down for like a month in October. More than a month, months. Oh my gosh. Months. Yeah, it was, and then they were backlogged for a long time too, um, right. of course, right? It makes sense. So um, yeah, we had probably like a nine month window there where we didn't print patterns, which part of it was also just COVID. Like we were a little shy to invest a ton of money in printed patterns. We weren't really sure what was happening with the industry, but the industry has right. come through, that's for sure. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we have a print order in right now, actually. So we'll have some of these uh, newer patterns printed very, like Yay. within about a month. Mm -hmm. Yay. Um, so do you have a favorite fabric to sew with and do you design your patterns with certain fabrics in mind? 
So I definitely like natural fibers. Um, I would say probably the fabric I'm a, like people kind of think of me for is rayon crepe. Mm. I just love it. I love yeah. that it has, it ha it's heavier than just a rayon chalet. So it has a little bit more drama. Um, mm -hmm. It looks like a silk, um, but it's easy to sew with and easy to care for. So um, I've done quite a few of my patterns using that as kind of like the base um yeah i yeah. mean there's a few times where i've done kits with my patterns you can and i do feel like those have been kind of strong patterns because i've had the fabric in mind from the beginning and it's kind of like this pattern is made for corduroy or made for rayon crepe or made right. for a sweater knit um but yeah i would say the one i sew with the most and the one i tend to buy whenever i find a cool print is a rayon <laughs> crepe. yeah i love a rayon crepe myself um, well, thanks so much for be being willing to be interviewed on our interview series. Thanks um, for is thinking there, of me. Yeah. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add about what's coming up or what you're looking forward to? I will say I do have a new pattern that I can't tell you what it is, but it's coming out hopefully the beginning of April that I'm really excited about, which is like my spring pattern. We're also extending right. our size range. So the Hudson, the Shelby, and the Southport are all back all right. to back and being extended into, so we'll have it in the full zero to 30, which we're really excited about. Oh, um, that's great. Yeah. So we have lots coming up. It's just chugging along one, one at a time. <laughs> Right. And people should follow you on Instagram at the at True Bias because you do a lot of um, sneak peeks and um, show all of your things made in all kinds of fabrics. So I encourage everyone to follow Kelly at True Bias. Yes, please do. That is definitely true. Uh, Instagram is my wheelhouse. So yeah, that's where I, I show up the strongest. So yeah. All right. Well, thanks so much. And I'll be back on Saturday, which is February 27th, when I'll be making a fanny pack. So I look forward to seeing you then. Thanks for watching and bye for now.